Hello everyone. Welcome to this special episode of 5 minutes please. Bas 5 minutes. I want to take you back to 2022 when I recorded a blog tracing the history of elections in India. It was done when Punjab was heading for assembly polls in February 2022. How did elections start in India in ancient India and how they evolved over the years what were the golden rules by which the elections were conducted from time to time and election process is as old as india is so i'll take you back to that episode which i recorded as i mentioned in 2022 and i hope you will like it though many of you may be knowing the history of elections in india or they may have updated their knowledge but i am sure this has helped many others to understand how the democratization process evolved in india and has reached and made india the biggest democracy in the world so Let's go back to that episode of February 2022. Enjoy. Hello friends, I am your host Prabhjot Singh. I take this opportunity to congratulate you. Very very happy festival of democracy. You all are going to exercise your franchise on coming Sunday and it is your right to elect your new government. It's a reiteration of a democracy where all eligible voters have a right to elect their new representatives in the state assembly and this is a time when people relax make their choices of their free will and put their confidence in people or parties they admire or they like and they approve elections are nothing new to india or punjab and election commission of india which is the constitutional authority to conduct elections comes out with annual reports and various publications it came out with a reference book in which it traces history of elections in india and it went back to 4th bc when india at that time ancient india had kushudrak mala sangha which was an elected republican government that opposed alexander the great and since then every adult male indian had a right to vote and vote at that time in ancient india was known known as chanda and at the, those days all voters were distributed shalaka or multicolored printed pins and then these were collected by an authority called shalaka grahaks after they had chosen which way or which individual they want to choose as their elected representative so those were the days when shalaka shalaka grahaks played a key role in democratizing the system then and when india got freedom india's first elections were held in 1951-52 and do you know those elections lasted more than 4 months it all started in october 1951 and the process ended in february 1952 at that time there were 173 million voters in india and at that time since india just got its freedom just got its independence it was a stupendous task to hold elections the voters were enrolled by house to house survey and at that time illiteracy was almost 70% people did, did know how to read and write and preparing electoral rolls those days was such a difficult task 
And those days, since it was the first election in uh, independent India, each candidate was given a symbol. And those symbols were painted on steel boxes, or steel voting boxes or ballot boxes. And the candidates of their choice, people would put their votes in a box on which the picture of their candidate of for whom they wanted to vote was printed. So this is how the elections were conducted at that time. And there were 2,24,000 polling booths. And elections were not only held for Lok Sabha, but also for the state assemblies. The voting was simultaneous. And 1 million officials were used to supervise the elections. And there were 14 national and 63 regional parties in the fray, besides a number of independents. There were 488 Lok Sabha seats and 3,283 assembly seats which went to polls simultaneously. 98 of those Lok Sabha seats and 669 of assembly seats were reserved at that time for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. When the results came out on February 21st, 1952, India had its first truly elected governments, both at the center and in various states. This is how the first election took place. And interestingly, the then Indian Prime Minister, Jawala Nehru, he went on campaigning for Congress and he traveled 40,000 kilometers and addressed nearly 35 million Indians, almost one-tenth of total Indian population. So that was how the hectic elections were at that time. There were, on those days, there were no model code of conduct or anything. And all elections were held physically with the ballot, printed ballot papers and in steel ballot boxes. Since then, elections have changed. There is a revolution in the election process. Now, you don't have printed ballot papers. They are used only when people in services, like in defense forces, use postal ballots. Otherwise, you have electronic voting machines, which are used to conduct elections in India or in states. Coming Sunday, it's going to be your election day in Punjab. It's a, basically a festival day. People come dressed in their colorful costumes. They queue up outside polling stations and wait for their turns to exercise their franchise. And it's, then they wait for the results to come. And then they celebrate if, in case, candidates of the choice have won. So it's a great festival, Kayan. It's a great democracy's day when people just get together and vote and elect their future rulers. How the word vote comes into our system? You see, it's uh, historically, vote comes from wo. Wo, as we all know, is a pledge or is when you swear under law or constitution, okay, you want, or religiously you want to vote for somebody or you want to say yes, to someone. So this is how the word vote from wo came and from vote comes the word ballot. Ballot is a word that basically comes from Italian word ballota. Ballota means ball, small balls. In ancient times, instead of a vote or a printed ballot paper, like in India, in Tamil Nadu, for example, they used palm leaves as a ballot paper on which the names of candidates were printed. And then those palm, dry palm leaves were put in earthen pots as the ballot boxes. So then the votes were counted. So this was a tradition in India in 920 AD, but in ancient Greece or in Austria, People 
would use pebbles small stones as a way to exercise their votes or cast their votes that's why pebbles from pebble is the word came physiophos or the small stones and at times there were times when in ancient greece or ancient uh, european nations the silver and gold coins were used to cast votes so that's the history of ballot or ballot votes it is australia which gets the credit for introducing the concept of secret ballot it was started in tasmania south australia and since then other countries also opted for secret ballot or ballot where a voter could maintain his confidentiality in the candidate for whom or in the party for whom he or she has voted and initially in many countries like united states voting rights were limited to people who used to live in that area but the united states was the first country which allowed people including immigrants to vote provided they were living there for a year and had decided to make united states their home and then gradually at that time women were not given the right to vote and new zealand for example was the first country in the world to give women the right to vote and in india women got the right to vote only in 1950 it's interesting how the election process the world over has gone in united states the system of electoral college came into being in 1758 so as you all are aware the united states in the presidential election is the electoral college not the people who elect the president and otherwise in other countries there are two types of democracies either people elect parliament or they elect the president as in the united states elections are very very elaborate system though very expensive also to put in place an elected government which is by free choice and free will of people or the able bodied or eligible voters when we talk of elections we also talk of certain rules certain controls as you know we in india have for last 30 40 years we have a model code of conduct that comes into force the moment elections are announced and now election they don't take that long as the first elections 1951 52 took they normally take more than a month and the time given for candidates is to to campaign or to talk to people to go to their electors and convince them of what they are going to do in next 5 years is 30 to 40 days and after more model code of conduct comes into force no government no political party can make those changes in the system which can affect the voting so if a ruling party is there and is contesting again it cannot make new announcements which can influence voters so that's model code of conduct even transfers of officials posted in districts and the state administration cannot be changed without the approval of the election commission or the chief electoral officer of that particular state so lots of things have changed like as i said from printed ballot paper electronic voting machines have come and polling booths are now the cleared sensitive super sensitive depending upon where and what locations and how close close or evenly contested the contests are expected to be so sensitivity is taken care of by deploying not only the state police force or state armed police force but also by the central security forces like in india we have central reserve police force indo tibetan border police force and border security force and a number of other paramilitary organizations so the 
elections have also the election commission appoints observers to make sure the candidates don't spend more than what they are legally permitted and they don't do things which are prohibited by law or they don't do things which can be very provocative or which can lead to tensions and pressures among candidates or among voters and or can divide them so elections are normally they try to hold it in a free fair manner and in a way people enjoy participating in their voting and because more the participation the better government is going to be because it is people's choice and once they make a choice it's going to be there for next 5 years so this is now going to happen in punjab on february 20th when you all more than 2.1 crore voters including 1.02 women voters are going to exercise the franchise and elect from amongst 1304 candidates there are your new 117 legislators who will ultimately sit and decide who is going to be the next chief minister or who are all going to be there in the council of ministers of the state and who all are going to sit in the opposition and who all are going to occupy the treasury benches so all set it's a time to celebrate and time to venture out and exercise your franchise take part in the vote voting system it's your right it's your choice it's your free will and it's time for you to decide decide what sort of government and what sort of future you visualize for your state and wishing you all the best for your festival of democracy enjoy thank you very much